Hi, I'm Mike and welcome back to my new YouTube channel, NC Woodworker. Just in case any of you have been searching on YouTube for my site, just to let you know that NC Woodworker is just one word. Okay, with that, let me tell you about today's project. Today, I'm going to make a Wood River salt and pepper shaker. And it's a turning kit. And the turning kit includes a uh, stainless steel tube with a silicone cap at, that goes on the end. It also includes two shaker caps. The kit doesn't include your turning stock, so you get to choose whatever kind of wood that you want to use. And the wood I've chosen to use today is, uh, is a maple for the salt and a black walnut for the pepper. Uh, there's three tools that, that you'll need to make this, and there, there are three Forstner bits. And earlier today, I made a uh, little sample shaker just so I can demonstrate how the three different Forstner bits come into play in making this shaker. The first one is a one and a half inch Forstner bit, and that bit is used to cut a relief hole at the very top, and that will accommodate the shaker cap. The bottom part hole, relief hole, is cut with a one and three eighths Forstner bit, and you do the same thing. Cut a relief hole down the bottom, and that'll accommodate the uh, the cap when the tube goes down into goes into your shaker. And lastly, the you'll need a one-inch Forstner bit, and that Forstner bit will drill a hole, one-inch hole, all the way through your stock from the from the bottom to the top. So. Uh, a couple other things I'll need to explain to you, but it may probably be easier to explain those over at the wood lathe. So let's proceed over to the wood lathe and get this started. Okay, I have my stock all set up in, in the uh, lathe, and uh, the instruction sheet is very informative that comes with the uh, kit. It gives you a nice written instruction and also gives you a diagram here exactly how you're supposed to make your relief cuts in the center hole. Uh, but basically, it's, uh, I've labeled this end as the cap end, so the instructions say I'm supposed to bore with a uh, one and a half inch Forstner bit to a depth of three sixteenths of an inch. And the plug side, which is this side, will be uh, using a one and three eighths inch Forstner bit with a, a quarter inch uh, relief cut. So before I mounted this uh, piece, I found the center. It's important to find the exact center of your piece, and I do. I I use my center finder, center finder uh, gauge right here, and it's really easy to stick it on there and make a draw a line and draw a line here, and that way you can line up your Forstner bit to the exact center of the uh, piece. So I'll go ahead and uh, show you how I, how I make the relief cut in this end, and then, uh, we'll, uh, then I'll proceed on to exactly how uh, I'm able to turn this piece uh, into turn it around and into the shape of the of the shaker. Okay, I've made the relief cuts on the, both the cap end and the plug end. Uh, previously, I forgot to mention that it's very important to do your relief cuts first before you do your center hole cut. reason for that is that uh, your Forstner bits has a little tip on the front of it, and that tip needs to grab hold of the, of the wood before it can cut. So if you make that uh, center hole cut first, then when you try to make your relief cuts, your Forstner bits that you'll be using won't have any wood to grab hold of, and they'll probably make it very difficult to make a clean uh, cutout. So the Forstner bit I'm using here is a one inch Forstner bit. And uh, it's, and since the piece here is three inches long uh, and my bit's not gonna be long enough, I'm gonna have to go about three quarters of the way in and then flip the piece over and then continue drilling on the other end until the two holes meet. Uh, I'll be turning this about 1200 RPMs. And when you're making the using this bit, it's important to, since it's going to get pretty hot uh, making this turn, that you need to just go slow and go in and out, in and out, so you can remove any of the wood shavings that it's cutting. You don't want that uh, wood shavings to build up inside that hole. So uh, let me go ahead and get started. The 
hole is now drilled through from the plug in through the cap in, and you can see it's a nice clean hole here. And the barrel looks out really clean. And it looks like the Forstner bits lined up really good to be able to cut from this end and then from this end to meet. So now we can proceed on turning the, uh, shaping the, the um, shaker piece. But you can see that we may have a problem here because uh, there's, you can't really, when you're using this four jaw, uh, four jaw chuck here, uh, you can't turn it completely because you have these jaws here and there's nothing really to grab hold here. So what we have to do now is make what they call a jam chuck. And I have an example of it here, right here. You need to just cut a piece of wood, stick on this end right here, like so, and then cut another piece here that can fit inside the jaws here and also fit into the piece here. And this is called a jam chuck. So you put it in here like this and clamp it down and then you can make your complete turn and, and turn your piece to make it look like this. So I'm going to show you how to make this jam chuck real quick, like it only takes a couple minutes to do. And uh, then we can uh, proceed on uh, turning the piece into a uh, shaker. Okay, I got my piece in here to make that jam, jam chuck. <clears throat> and all it is is just a piece of wood that I just rounded over. And remember that the core the diameter of our of our shaker is one inch. So you need to have this end right here a little less than one inch. So it'll uh, fit, fit snug in here. So you just turn this piece here <clears throat> uh, around the end here to about one inch and then just slowly creep up on it until uh, you can fit it in there. And then once you get this down to about 0.9 inches, then you flare this up. So it'll make a tight fit in here. And this other side over here, you don't have to worry about because it's just going on this live center. And you just have to stick it in here like so. And then this live center will just hold up, hold the piece in. So I'm gonna show you real quickly how to make this uh, uh, jam chuck. <laughs> Okay, the uh, jam chuck is complete. You see that I uh, made this uh, flare out from the center here and still left enough wood in here so we can mount it into the uh, four jaw chuck. And uh, so it should just fit in here really nice and snug like this. And uh, this other end, you basically make the same way, but you just uh, make it a little bit shorter and you stick it in here. The reason why we do that is so we have a live center chuck right here. It's a 60 degree cone live center. And <clears throat> so with it mounted on this end with the live center and be able to make that jam chuck fit into the four chuck uh, jaw, then we can round this over into the shape of a shaker. Practice piece I made is about 1.9 inches on each end, about one and three quarters in the middle. I like the shape of this, and I'll probably do the same thing with this one here. It just has a nice uh, feel to it, and it has with this cove in here, it has a nice grip, so you can use it as a shaker. <clears throat> so first thing we need is just around this, and then we'll worry about exactly how we're gonna uh, carve into it and make it into a shaker. So let's get started. It didn't take very long to turn. So I drew a center line here. So I just put a one and a half inch line right here down the middle. And you can see on the previous the sample piece I made, I made a little end groove, end groove, groove right here. And I want to do the same thing. And remember, this is the, the uh, cap end and this is the plug end. So this is the bottom. I'll sit like this, so the plug go right here. And I forgot to mention that I'm turning this about 1800 RPMs. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, I shaped it very similar, similar to the uh, sample one I did earlier. And I sanded it all the way down to 400 grit. Man, it's uh, looking pretty good now. So all I got up to do now is just I'm gonna put some oil on here and then I'll just follow that with some, <clears throat> follow that with some paste wax. I won't take a whole lot of oil because the paste wax will just adding some more oil to the shaker. Some paste wax. Paste wax I'll be using as a uh, Howard Citrus Shield. And so I put it on kind of liberally here, just rub it in here, start like this, and then I'll turn on the motor and let it work its way in. Good. Yeah. It with a paper towel. You don't want this thing to get caught up in the machine, and it uh, could do some uh, could hurt you. If you use a paper towel, you won't have to worry about it getting caught on something and pulling your hand into the, uh, into the machine. So I'll just do this for a couple minutes, and then uh, I'll show you what uh, what it looks like. I already glued the caps onto the shakers. I want to show you the walnut pepper shaker. It has beautiful grain to it, appropriately colored for the pepper. So this turned out really nice too. The maple too is a light colored for the salt. It has a nice grain to it and uh, I think it's been uh, very easy to handle. Nice grip to it. So all we have to do now to finish it up is to glue the the caps onto the tops. And I'm using a 30 minute epoxy. It's a BSI, BSI epoxy. I'm in no hurry, you can always use a five, but I'm gonna go with a 30 here. I've already mixed up the epoxy here. I'm gonna uh, paint the inside of the caps with the epoxy, just like this. stick this guy on here like so and I guess you can just turn them upside down and that should be enough weight there to hold the cap down so that's how I uh, did the uh, caps and that's the completion of the salt and pepper shaker I uh, hope you enjoyed the video and if you did give me a like and thumbs up and I have some previous videos on there and I will be presenting uh, a few more videos, try to do them once a week. And if you really like those, then subscribe and, and uh, then you can watch them about every week. So thanks for joining me on these pepper shakers, salt and pepper shakers, and I'll see you on the next project.